Hello, my sexy and beautiful people of the internet. My name is Diego, also known as the Chilean Retro Gamer. And welcome back to the Backlog series. And today I'm going to be playing some Super Bomberman 2 for the Super Nintendo. This is actually a, a brand new experience to me because... I'm actually going to be streaming from a different room from usual. I'm not streaming from my own room, but from an empty room. Basically, nobody sleeps in here. But it is uh, equipped enough. I'm going to decrease the volume on my own end so I can listen to myself. Sorry about that. So yeah, guys, um, I am in a, a room where nobody sleeps that has a sofa little couch and I got enough space to put my big Samsung 20 inch CRT television and of course I can hook up all my classic consoles in the very same room on another wall we got an HDTV where I can hook up my mother consoles that the, the ones that use HDMI so yeah we can say that this is some sort of game room even though it's not it's basically a room where nobody sleeps and I spend most of the day in because I'm doing um, home office so I work pretty much all day from here and now that I'm done with work for today I use in pretty much the same space to hook up my Super Nintendo and play some Super Bomberman 2 so yeah as I showed you in the picture um, in last night's post the YouTube community tab thing that probably you guys follow or you received on your phones as a as an update. I'm playing from a real Super Nintendo from a real cartridge, the Japanese version that is, because when I bought it like seven or eight years ago, it was basically cheaper. The Japanese versions of certain games tended to be cheaper. I don't know how the situation is nowadays, to be honest. But I feel fortunate enough, so I got actually the whole Super Bomberman collection from 1 through 5 for the Super Famicom specifically, the Japanese cartridges of each. But I'm playing it on an American Super Nintendo because I modded it many, many years ago. I don't even remember how many years it's been since then. But yeah, I mean, the last. Episodes of the backlog, the sorry, the backlog series I did were basically classic games played from a computer on an official compilation, which is basically disguised emulation. But no, uh, that, that was basically the the lazy approach. I was basically doing that because I didn't feel like hooking up my consoles and make the necessary adjustments. But I actually took the time to set up my stuff. I think I told you at some point in some previous video of, of another project on this very same channel, I fucked it up because if you bump the door, you make an enemy appear and it, it appear right in my face it couldn't be more dangerous than this uh oh and I did it again because there is a magnet motherfucker okay, hopefully this is going to be enough to get rid of both no, still went alive um, so yeah, uh, I was actually very lazy to set up my consoles, my capture cards, because I have actually like three different capture cards I use. The good old Dazzle that I'm using right now, I got the Aver Media HDMI capture card and the Light Gamer Portable, I think it's called, and an old Hapag as well for component gaming or component cables uh, specifically for the PlayStation 3 and HD games on the Wii so yeah I use three different setups not very practical if you ask me but it works it works for me um, I set them all up so it's just plug and play by now I got all my capture cards set up across the different rooms I got the Dazzle in here, the Aver Media also here for HDMI gaming, and oh, I fucked it up. And the other one, the Hapag on my own room where I play PlayStation 3. 
So, I mean, I, I wish I could show you how I set it up. It would be interesting for some people, but it's not a gamer room. I mean, compared to what those people do with their, your, their own space, how they, they set up their consoles, their couches, and, and, and their capturing setup. My own setup is a real piece of shit in comparison. It, it, it's really simplistic. I make it sound like it is the greatest thing ever. It is the greatest thing ever for me. Because I'm finally able to basically hook up and play any of the consoles I have without having to find cables or, or, or move things from one room to another. Everything is here, everything is set up, ready to just connect and play. So, don't get surprised if I do consoles more often now. Well, my Super Nintendo collection is not as huge as, as in... I mean, it, it is at least a decent one. I got at least 30 different games. And also got a multi-card with 100 games. Uh, complete different games from, from the one that I have on individual cartridge. So that, it's pretty awesome to actually show off a little bit of what you have with the people. It's not just using an, a, um, an EverDrive with all the ROMs in a single cartridge. I mean, I could do that. I mean, eventually I will be getting one of those, but I prefer just the individual cartridges, of course, as long as I can afford them. And multi-carts that have a, just a limited amount of games. I don't know, I find them more interesting than just one cartridge that has it all. I do have actually one, uh, sorry, three multi-cards. One for the Super Nintendo with 100 games. Uh, some of them are actually one of the most expensive ones in, in the, for the console, so... I think it's a very, it was a very good investment. And I got it for pretty much $20. So totally worth the, the, the buy. And I also got 150 games for the NES. And another one with 200, I think a little bit less than 200 games for the Sega Genesis. So yeah, I got a few multi-cards and I would like to get more at some point. But I still like my individual games. I got a bunch, especially for the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom. Uh, a, a few more for the NES and uh, a bunch for the Sega Genesis as well. Not to mention the digital compilations of games that I have on PC and PlayStation 3, the Wii, just to mention a few. But again, nothing beats the experience of playing a retro game on a CRT, the bigger the better. So yeah, I got my 20 inch uh, CRT right in front of me, in a comfy couch, little couch. It's a few tons type of couch. You know, those that become beds as well. And I'm pretty actually satisfied with the results. Sorry about this nonsense talk about my setup. But again, I'm kind of excited about this new... This new place where I, I'm going to be recording my stuff from. At least when it comes to classic consoles. And a few modern ones as well, yes. I just need to rotate the, the couch a little bit, and I will be in front of the big HD TV. With which I can play pretty much everything that has HDMI support. Yep, I got enough range to get rid of the Moai. Do I want to become faster than this, you know? I will become a little bit faster than this. I think this is the max speed I will be getting on my own wheel. So how's everybody uh, doing? Uh, I was away from the... Oh, I actually died? I thought it was safe. Hmm. Uh, I've been away from the... Um, streaming slash recording world for a couple of weeks. Like I actually mentioned in one post on YouTube, and I, I know some of you actually read it. Um, 
and commented on it that it was a, a rough last couple of weeks because I got a one uh, colleague going on vacation so I had to take care of his his own clients and that was actually really exhausting I mean many people of the team in this um, logistics company I work for went, went on vacation and, or, or took a, a, a sick leave or something like that and we were just improvising solutions for basically fulfill the client requirements in terms of the transportation of containers and such it was a rough week and the next week that is to say the last week um, was not less um, how can I say it was not more relaxed because I had to take care of a lot of pending things you know, I, I do want to get this uh, extra fire power to get the 9, to get the limit of 9 for bomb amounts and for firepower. And I think we made it to the boss. <clears throat> we are fighting the boss. Well, we got two bosses actually in every world. One smaller boss, which is basically someone similar to you, but with their own power, plus the big robot battle. Yes, I'm getting the heart, you know, the heart is basically one extra hit. Now let's get to talk about the game a little bit more. I mean, it's Bomberman, everybody knows Bomberman, there is nothing too new to, to explain about him. I already did Super Bomberman 1, actually, for the Backlog series. I think I did it live. But it was many years ago, it was like five years ago. Can't believe how many years it's been since I started this newer serious thing. It was in 2016. I haven't landed a single hit yet. It's a little frustrating. There you go, finally one hit. Oh shit! I didn't realize that I put a bomb in there. Oh, will I make an enemy spawn? No. Okay, he got hit by his own bomb. It happens. Like I say, it's usually a matter of time, but still, you need a lot of patience. And it takes three bombs. There we go. I guess we're gonna do the whole world today and leave the next one for next time. I don't know if I'm gonna beat the game. Remember, I'm playing from a real console with no option for save stating. I mean, I would be able to save state if I was using an EverDrive, which is not the case. I'm using the individual cartridge, like I showed you. So, no save states. Play like a real man. But, I mean, I already told you a bunch of times in different playthroughs. Um, now, the focus of my videos in general is not just the generic let's play trying to beat a game no matter what but essentially play and enjoy the game as much as we can even if that means not beating it but in this case I, I, I think I can beat this one I think I beat it once like on my own the last world is a fucking nightmare though I mean the final boss itself is not too bad the problem is it's not safe I'm gonna get away um, I mean, if you don't have full power, of course it would be super problematic. And I know I can beat relatively easily the first three or four worlds. The fifth, which is the last one, if I'm not mistaken, is the super tough one. So maybe I will just be showcasing a bunch of worlds until I get tired and I rage quit and try to attempt a real playthrough on a live stream or something. But again, that, that's the whole point of the backlog. Play the games from the original hardware, the quote-unquote intended way. And I'm just enjoying the experience regardless of the fact of me beating the game or not. I mean, if I had, like, the whole day, if this was basically 
in my full-time job, yes, I would try to, to beat it by playing all day long, but it's not the case. I, I barely got a couple of hours to play two or three times a week. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for today. I wanna thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time playing through world number two.